In continuum mechanics, the infinitesimal strain theory is a mathematical approach to the description of the deformation of a solid body in which the displacements of the material particles are assumed to be much smaller than any relevant dimension of the body, so that its geometry and the constitutive properties of the material at each point of space can be assumed to be unchanged by the deformation. With this assumption, the equations of continuum mechanics are considerably simplified. This approach may also be called small deformation theory, small displacement theory, or small displacement gradient theory. It is contrasted with the finite strain theory where the opposite assumption is made. The infinitesimal strain theory is commonly adopted in civil and mechanical engineering for the stress analysis of structures built from relatively stiff elastic materials like concrete and steel. Since a common goal in the design of such structures is to minimize their deformation under typical loads, infinitesimal strain tensor. For infinitesimal deformations of a continuum body, in which the displacement and the displacement gradient are small compared to unity, i.e., and, it is possible to perform a geometric linearization of any one of the strain tensors used in finite strain theory, e.g., the Lagrangian strain tensor and the Eulerian strain tensor. In such a linearization, the nonlinear or second-order terms of the finite strain tensor are neglected. Thus we have or in all this linearization implies that the Lagrangian description and the Eulerian description are approximately the same as there is little difference in the material and spatial coordinates of a given material point in the continuum. Therefore, the material displacement gradient components and the spatial displacement gradient components are approximately equal. Thus we have or where are the components of the infinitesimal strain tensor, also called Corky's strain tensor, linear strain tensor, or small strain tensor, or using different notation. Furthermore, since the deformation gradient can be expressed as where is the second order identity tensor, we have also, from the general expression for the Lagrangian and Eulerian finite strain tensors we have geometric derivation of the infinitesimal strain tensor. Consider a two-dimensional deformation of an infinitesimal rectangular material element with dimensions by which after deformation, takes the form of a rhombus. From the geometry of figure 1 we have for very small displacement gradients, i.e., we have the normal strain in the direction of the rectangular element is defined by and knowing that, we have similarly, the normal strain in the direction, and direction, becomes the engineering shear strain, or the change in angle between two originally orthogonal material lines, in this case line in, is defined as from the geometry of figure 1 we have for small rotations, i.e., and a we have an, again, for small displacement gradients, we have thus by interchanging an an and, it can be shown that similarly, for the, and, planes, we have it can be seen that the tensorial shear strain components of the infinitesimal strain tensor can then be expressed using the engineering strain definition. As physical interpretation of the infinitesimal strain tensor from finite strain theory we have for infinitesimal strains then we have dividing by. We have for small deformations we assume that. Thus the second term of the left hand side becomes. Then we have where, is the unit vector in the direction of, and the left-hand side expression is the normal strain in the direction of, for the particular case of in the direction, i.e., we have similarly, for and we can find the normal strains and, respectively. Therefore, the diagonal elements of the infinitesimal strain tensor are the normal strains in the coordinate directions. Strain transformation rules if we choose an orthonormal coordinate system instead. In that case the components of the tensor are different. Say the components of the strain in the two coordinate systems are related by where the Einstein summation convention for repeated indices has been used and in matrix for more strain invariant certain operations on the strain tensor give the same result without regard to which orthonormal coordinate. 
system is used to represent the components of strain. The results of these operations are called strain invariants. The most commonly used strain invariants are in terms of components principal strains it can be shown that it is possible to find a coordinate system. Coordinate system are called the principal strains and the directions are called the directions of principal strain. Since there are no shear strain components in this coordinate system, the principal strains represent the maximum and minimum stretches of an elemental volume. If we are given the components of the strain tensor in an arbitrary orthonormal coordinate system, we can find the principal strains using an eigenvalue decomposition determined by solving the system of equations. This system of equations is equivalent to finding the vector along which the stress tensor becomes a pure stretch with no shear component. Volumetric strain The dilatation is the trace of the tensor. Actually, if we consider a cube with an edge length A, it is a quasi-cube after the deformation with the dimensions and V0 equals A3. Thus as we consider small deformations, therefore the formula, real variation of volume and the approximated one. The green drawing shows the estimated volume and the orange drawing the neglected volume in case of pure shear. We can see that there is no change of the volume. Strain deviator tensor The infinitesimal strain tensor, similarly to the Cauchy stress tensor, can be expressed as the sum of two other tensors. A mean strain tensor or volumetric strain tensor or spherical strain tensor related to dilation or volume change and a deviatoric component called the strain deviator tensor related to distortion. Whereas the mean strain given by the deviatoric strain tensor can be obtained by subtracting the mean strain tensor from the infinitesimal strain tensor. Octahedral strains let to 3D tensors but in prismatic structures such as a long metal billet, the length of the structure is much greater than the other two dimensions. The strains associated with length, i.e., the normal strain and the shear strains and are constrained by nearby material and are small compared to the cross-sectional strains. Plane strain is then an acceptable approximation. The strain tensor for plane strain is written as in which the double underline indicates a second-order tensor. This strain state is called plane strain. The corresponding stress tensor is, in which the non-zero is needed to maintain the constraint. This stress term can be temporarily removed from the analysis to leave only the in-plane terms, effectively reducing the 3D problem to a much simpler 2D problem. The strain tensor for antiplane strain is given by infinitesimal rotation tensor. The infinitesimal strain tensor is defined as therefore the displacement gradient can be expressed as where the quantity is the infinitesimal rotation tensor. This tensor is skew-symmetric. For infinitesimal deformations the scalar components have satisfy the condition. Note that the displacement gradient is small only if both the strain tensor and the rotation tensor are infinitesimal. The axial vector A skew symmetric second order tensor has three independent scalar components. These three components are used to define an axial vector, as follows where is the permutation symbol. In matrix form the axial vector is also called the infinitesimal rotation vector. The rotation vector is related to the displacement gradient by the relation in index notation if and then the material undergoes an approximate rigid body rotation of magnitude around the vector. Relation between the strain tensor and the rotation vector given a continuous single-value displacement field and the corresponding infinitesimal strain tensor. We have, since a change in the order of differentiation does not change the result. Therefore also hence relation between rotation tensor and rotation vector from an important identity regarding the curl of a tensor we know that for a continuous single value displacement field since we have strain tensor in cylindrical coordinates 